Welcome back to Forza Horizon 5 Hot Wheels Expansion, and this video is all about how you can unlock my favorite Hot Wheels car of all time, the Diora 2. So make sure you stick around for the rest of the video. Now, the first step in unlocking the Diora 2 is making your way up to the A-Class Qualifier. Now, in order to get to the A-Class Qualifier, you need to make your way through the B-Class races. Now, what I did to make it through these fairly quickly was I stuck with the Baja Bone Shaker as it seemed like it was pretty capable and it was able to pretty much bring home a victory in about every B-Class race that it was eligible for. Now, one cool thing about some of these races is that the races that they use off-road vehicles for, they actually put these giant speed bumps on the track so that it kind of levels out the playing field a little bit and actually makes off-road races still somewhat, you know, geared towards off-road vehicles even while using Hot Wheels tracks. Another thing that I really like about the Hot Wheels map is that they have still retained that element of cross-country and off-road racing, even on a map that is mostly set around the orange Hot Wheels tracks. And you actually have a lot of open area that you can drive around off-road if you enjoy off-roading in Horizon 5. And actually, stay tuned to the channel because there will be a video soon on some hidden off-road spots that are actually really fun to just explore around um, in off-road vehicles, and they're actually a lot more interesting and intricate than you might think. They've actually spent a lot more time on the areas that don't involve Hot Wheels track than you may think. I mean, obviously, the majority of that work and time was put into the Hot Wheels tracks themselves, but there are some really cool off-road sections on this map as well, so make sure you stay tuned for those. Now, once again, once you've won enough races in B-Class, you will then unlock the A-Class Qualifier. And the A-Class Qualifier is going to be where you'll have your first opportunity to drive the Diora 2. Haley says she's always wanted to see what this thing can do on this scale. So for that, I think we need to take it surfing. For your next qualifier, you'll need to prove you can take on the water flumes at high speed. Let's go. Now, this is where we get our very first taste of what the water flume track is like. Now, water flume track is really interesting because it's so different, or at least so different feeling and looking from anything else on the map. Now, if you're in first person view, if you're actually inside the car, there's going to be a lot of water on the windshield. Your windshield wipers are going to be going crazy. But even if you're in third person, that water is going to be going all over your screen. And essentially, what the water flume track track feels like is it feels like ice track but with a little bit more grip and a lot of speed and what it basically does is as you're going down that hill as you're going down the water flume it continually accelerates your car but you also maintain a pretty high threshold of grip which I found kind of surprising but really it's not that difficult of a surface to get acclimated to now Getting three stars on this mission is going to unlock the Diora 2 for you. But what I really like is that it's already got all of those little nods to Highway 35 already on it. Now, while it may not have the original exact design from Highway 35, it does have the Highway 35 surfboards on the back, which... I mean, even if it didn't have the original Highway 35 design, like, I get why they wouldn't have that design in particular, but the fact that they even have the surfboards themselves is already a huge, huge nod to that series, at least in my opinion. And as we continue on towards the finish line, you can hear that supercharged V8 in the back absolutely screaming. This car has one of the loudest supercharger sounds I have heard in this game in a very, very long time. They absolutely knocked it out of the park with the screaming supercharger sound on this car. Now, if you're not a fan of that, you know, high-pitched supercharger whine, then it might not be the car for you. But if you are, you are going to be all over this car. And then once you've completed that A-Class qualifier, I'm pretty certain that this is the car that a lot of you guys are going to be using for the A-Class events. Because, bro, not only is it set up already as A800 PI out of the box, it's just a really great driving car. It's got a 
lot of really good suspension dynamics. It turns in really well. It's got great grip. It actually positions the weight over the rear of the car. And so when you give it throttle at really any point in the corner, even if you're sliding, you still gain a lot of forward momentum. So a little bit of a different driving dynamic than what you may be used to. But once you get used to how it drives, bro, this thing absolutely rips. One thing that I thought was a little odd, though, was when I started looking around the interior for the first time, I noticed a couple of things. One, on the dash, on the digital dash, you can see that it's actually an automatic. And two, that steering wheel is more of like, it's weird. Is that a wheel? Is that a yoke? I'm not sure. It looks like a steering wheel just with the upper portion of it just literally cut out. So, kind of an odd interior for this car, but that still, to me, does not take away from what this car represents for me in terms of just even, like, memories that I have from my childhood. I still have this physical Hot Wheels car. Like, this exact car, I have it in real life. And being able to hold that physical Hot Wheels car and then drive it here in-game, that's pretty dang special. And also those exhausts, the quad exhausts that just come down literally right off of the back of the car. It's not very practical, and it would absolutely get, you know, get destroyed if anything were to ever, like, run into this car from behind, but still, from a design, like, a purely design perspective, and almost like a purely an art perspective, this car is one of those cars that I think is just a gorgeous, gorgeous piece of design, and I think it really represents what happens when you let a designer just go wild and just go nuts on a car, and then you end up with something like this. You end up with something that's so outside the norm and so outside the box of what you would expect, but in the best way possible. One thing I will say, though, is that if you plan on doing some off-road races, make sure you go back to the garage first and swap your setup over to something a little bit more rally-friendly, like maybe some dirt tires or something like that, or at least a tire compound that's in between, because yours truly decided it would be a good idea to jump right into this race, not realizing that it had a lot of off-road slash cross-country style sections, and I ended up getting myself into a little bit of trouble because of that, and then I realized I wasn't really going to win with the car in this setup. Now, instead of going back and trying to turn this thing into a rally car. I actually grabbed a rally tune uh, off of a car that I already had and ran that instead, which you'll see a little bit later on in the video, because I didn't really want to mess with the setup on this car yet. Like, I really liked the way this car felt, and I really liked the way it performed on the Hot Wheels tracks, so I wanted to leave the setup that it had on it, I wanted to leave the setup there for at least a little bit of a good while and really get used to how it drove before I went all wacky with the upgrades and started messing with the way the car drove. Now, once I realized I wasn't going to win this race with that setup on that car, I went ahead and pulled out this Rally Z. Now, this Z was actually tuned, or at least the tune for it was made, by a longtime member of our channel and our Discord server. And you guys can find the link to the Discord server in the description box down below. We do a lot of uh, Horizon-related stuff over there, especially like with in-depth talks about tuning and photography and stuff like that. But this car actually does really, really well in terms of, you know, multi-surface racing. And I, once again, overcooked it into this corner. I'm not totally used to this circuit yet, not totally used to this route. But as you can see right off the bat, if you need to, like, just go through a cross-country race or go through a race that requires some kind of rally-style approach, do not hesitate to, sh to, like, shift over to a car that you know works really well for cross-country races back on the main map. Because a car that works well for cross-country races back on the main map will also work well for cross-country races here. And that was kind of something I was messing around with. I was like, do I mess with the setup on the Diora 2 to make it, you know, a multi-surface car? Or do I just pull out a car that I know works really well for multi-surface racing and that I know is going to be really reliable and that I know will probably get me the win and then be able to go back to the Diora 2 later and use it for more track-dedicated stuff? And I decided to stick with that option. Now, later on down the road, I will probably have multiple setups for the Diora 2, one being rear-wheel drive, one being all-wheel drive, and then one also being being a rear-wheel drive drift setup, I'll probably at the end of the day have three, maybe even four or five different setups for that car, because again, I love that car so much and I want to be able to use it for everything, but at this particular point in my playthrough, I was not at that point yet to where I could uh, build out a bunch of different setups for that one car, and I really wanted to get this race done, and that's again why I swapped over to one of my rally-focused builds. 
another tip I can give you guys if you're just starting out with the Hot Wheels expansion is don't necessarily give up on a race if you're even like, you know, 60 or 70% into it and you're still a few places back. There's definitely going to be opportunities for you near the end of these races to catch up to the cars in front. So don't necessarily count a race out before it's over. Now, obviously, if you're at like 95% completion and you're in like seventh, then you might want to restart. But if you're in like third, second, you know, and you're getting 70, 80% done and you're like, oh, I might as well restart go ahead and run the rest of that race because you may surprise yourself as to what might happen. But at the same time, you better believe that when that race was over, I was right back into the Diora 2 because that's exactly where I wanted to be. Because when I tell you guys that, you know, as a kid, I was obsessed with this car. I was obsessed with this car to a degree that probably wasn't exactly good for me. But you know what? It's okay because I feel like everybody, if you're into Hot Wheels, especially at that early age, you have that maybe that one car, or even if it's like two or three or four cars that you really, really just geek out over. And for me, this was just that car. This car was not only a Hot Wheels car to me, it was the Hot Wheels car. And the craziest part about it is the fact that I don't think it's really been able to be experienced in a game, aside from obviously like Hot Wheels Unleashed, since some early Hot Wheels games that were, you know, multiple gaming generations back. I mean, we're talking about Xbox, like early Xbox, early PS2, you know, stuff like that. But go ahead and let me know in the comment section down below what the first Hot Wheels game you actually played was. And yes, the early browser games from the original Hot Wheels website do count because that is where I actually started playing Hot Wheels games. Like, my first Hot Wheels games were not games that came on a gaming system. They were literally games that I played in a browser on the Hot Wheels website. And just saying that out loud and then reliving that, like, internally in my head, it's like... Wow, that's a long time ago. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you guys next time. Talk to you all later.